This program has two parts. In the first part, we'll focus on the difference between biofuels and fossil fuels. And in the second part, we'll examine the, how the composition of a fuel affects its carbon dioxide production and its specific energy. First off, let's begin by looking at what are biofuels. Biofuels are made by fixing carbon, in particular carbon dioxide, through photosynthesis in short periods of time. We need to know the equation for photosynthesis. So maybe I'll put it up here. Um, carbon dioxide gas plus H2O liquid in the presence of sunlight or UV light will produce glucose and oxygen gas. Uh, now to balance it, we'll need six there, six there, and a six in front of the oxygen. And a couple other features of biofuels, um, they're renewable. Renewable meaning that they are essentially made faster than they are consumed. The other feature about biofuels is they're considered carbon neutral. What this means, there's a balance between their production and their absorption. So they're absorbed through photosynthesis. The production of carbon comes from things like burning, decomposition, or respiration. And initially, prior to the 1900s, there existed a balance between the production of carbon dioxide or carbons and their removal from our environment. With the introduction of fossil fuels, that balance, however, was broken. But first, what are fossil fuels? Well, they're made by the partial decomposition of plant and animal material over millions of years versus a short period of time for our biofuels. These particular fuels are non-renewable. What that means essentially is that they are consumed faster than they are made. And secondly, they are significant producers of greenhouse gases. And in particular, carbon dioxide. I've got a few examples of each of these. So let's start off with the biofuels. They would be considered things like wood or ethanol obtained from grains and methanol. And finally, our examples of fossil fuels, they would include things like coal, crude oil, and natural gas, which is mostly methane. Let's explore a little bit more about how this greenhouse gases effect works. So over here, I have incoming radiation from the sun. The incoming radiation from the sun is mainly composed of what we call shortwave radiation. This form of radiation, by and large, is not absorbed by the gases in our environment, but instead absorbed at the surface of the Earth. The Earth then re-emits that radiation as long waves. And in particular, infrared radiation. So that now heads up this way towards one of our greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide. CO2 being a somewhat complex molecule with three atoms, can vibrate in a variety of ways that can absorb and use this energy. So if I take my carbon dioxide for a minute and I make those oxygens vibrate up and down, that's one mode that will absorb this infrared radiation. I can also slide the oxygens one way or the other way, and that will also absorb this infrared radiation. And I can combine these motions and sort of make it move 
the oxygens move off on an angle. That too will absorb this radiation. Molecules with methane that have essentially five atoms can absorb also in a wide variety of ways infrared radiation. Simple molecules like oxygen and nitrogen don't have this ability. Now let's look at some of the trends in the fuel. The fuel I want to consider in my explanation here is ethane. And you'll see its data presented here. So I want to show you how these numbers are generated. One of the considerations about a fuel is its percentage of carbon, because that will have something to do with the type of combustion it will undergo. So if I want to get the percent of carbon, what I need is the mass of the carbon on top. So in this case, that would be two carbons at 12.01 each. This data coming from your, your periodic table over the mass of the compound, which would be 2 times 12.01 plus um, 6 times 1.01, and multiply that result by 100. And uh, I'll give my answer here to uh, four significant digits, 79.85%. So there's how you can see how I arrived at I rounded it off to two in the table, roughly 80% carbon. Another feature is how much carbon dioxide does our fuel produce? So let's say we have one gram of our fuel. The first thing I'm going to do is convert that into moles. So I know that one mole of my ethane weighs 30.08 grams. That's obtained from really adding that line together there. And that gives me the moles of my ethane. So multiplying that. Next thing I'm going to multiply this by is how many moles of carbon dioxide do I get from every mole of ethane? Well, since there's two carbons present, I would get two moles of carbon dioxide for every one mole of my ethane. And finally, to convert that into grams of carbon dioxide, I would again employ the molar mass and multiply this by 44.02, and that's grams per mole of carbon dioxide. So multiplying that out, I get 2.9 grams, which is the number you see here. Lastly, what's the energy of this fuel? For this, I'm going to consult uh, table 14 in my IB data booklet and take a look at the heat of combustion. And there I find this number, 1561 kilojoules per mole of ethane. I'm going to take that and using the information about the molar mass, I can know that one mole of my ethane weighs 30.08 grams. And I can see here how that will then give me units of kilojoules per gram of fuel. And that comes out to 51.89 kilojoules per gram of fuel burned. And that's the number that you can see here. So you need to be able to generate these particular numbers given some data. Now this one, the energy in coal, that's not in your IB data booklet. Um, that one I just researched on the web. But I want to look at a couple of patterns here. First of all, um, as the percent of carbon increases, so we're looking at data as we move across this way. Well, the first thing I would like to note is something that we've come across a bit earlier is that as you increase the amount of carbon in a fuel, the amount of incomplete combustion increases. So of these fuels, I would expect ethanol to burn the cleanest versus coal the dirtiest. Let's look at the carbon dioxide produced. We can see here a pattern as we increase the percentage of carbon 
we would increase the mass of carbon dioxide. That makes sense. If our fuel has more carbon in it, that's more moles of carbon, that's more moles of carbon dioxide that are made. Lastly, I want to focus at a trend that only occurs within my hydrocarbons. So I'm just going to consider this range of chemicals. So looking at my hydrocarbons and the energy, as I increase the carbon content, the energy content decreases. So the energy per gram is referred to as the specific energy. So we can see here as we move from methane to ethane to coal, I'm actually getting less energy per gram of fuel burned. So that summarizes some of the trends you should be able to pick out in a table. Thanks for watching.